welcome back. So, we were discussing about uh, the inventory management in our last session and we started discussions about uh, two stage inventory management in the supply chain and we discussed that how directly at stage 2 we can apply EOQ model because of this saw teeth pattern, but directly we saw that we have this type of step pattern at stage 1 and therefore, we cannot apply that EOQ model at stage 1 in this supply chain, but then immediately it was told to us that there is a concept known as echelon in inventory stocks. The echelon inventory stocks where you have physical inventory at stage 1 plus physical inventory at stage 2 and when we used this echelon concept then we saw in the last session that we can have these types of dotted slanted lines and as usual what we discuss in the last class that these vertical lines are representing the replenishment stocks, the stocks when it is coming to you the replenishment stocks and these slanted lines the line with slopes these are representing the consumption lines. So, same way now we have in our stage 1 also these vertical lines as our replenishment lines and these virtual lines these dotted lines these dotted lines are the consumption line and therefore, you have saw teeth pattern you have the saw teeth pattern at installation 1 also and now because of this saw teeth pattern at installation 1 you can apply EOQ model at installation 1 also. So, now this agreement is being made that we can apply EOQ model at both these installation 1 and installation 2. Now, we are told that how to apply EOQ model for a single stage for a single installation. So, now let us start doing that only now let us start doing that only and uh, as we have discussed that all the assumptions all the assumptions which we take for developing basic EOQ model will apply here also the only additional assumption the only additional condition which we discussed in the last session that because of the value addition as we are discussing in a supply chain environment the H2 the holding cost which we are incurring at our right hand side of the supply chain will be more than the holding cost which we incur at the left hand sides. So, as we are coming from left to right the holding cost values keep on increasing. We will discuss one more concept about handling this increasing holding cost because now we have discussed about the echelon stocks. So, the concept of echelon stock will help us in understanding the combined optimization also, but before we start this combined optimization let me go with the separate optimization when we handle the inventories at installation 1 and installation 2 in separate manners and uh, that is how we do the inventory management when we are handling two cases separately. Then at installation 1 at installation 1 let us say the total cost of inventory total variable cost of inventory is being represented by C 1 and uh, now C 1 is composed of ordering cost or the setup cost and the holding cost. So, the ordering cost is that number of times you give the order your total requirement is D is total requirement is D 
which is at the end of the supply chain this is the total requirement D and each time okay, let us discuss first for installation 2. So, C2 is our because we have discussed that our Q1 is N Q2. So, right now we are discussing the inventory management for our second installation that we are starting this process because here it was very clear that how we can apply that basic UQ model. So, for that purpose we are starting with our installation 2. So, at installation 2 C2 the cost is D by Q2 and the cost of order per order is K2. So, D K2 upon Q2 is the ordering or setup cost. Then the second cost is the holding cost and uh, in EOQ development we have discussed that it is always paid on the average inventory stock you have. So, Q2 is the total, 0 is the least. So, Q2 by 2 is the average inventory and uh, the holding cost is H2 per unit per year. So, this becomes the expression for calculating the total variable cost and we already know to determine the value of Q2, you need to differentiate it and the apply principles of maxima minima, equate that differential equal to 0 and then you get the value of Q2. So, this will result into Q2 star that is under root 2 D K 2 upon H 2. This is the economic order quantity value which we should have at installation 2 and this Q 2 value if I substitute back into this, if I put Q 2 back into this, this will result the this will result C 2 minimum which will be I request all participants that uh, they should do this and uh, put this value of Q 2 in this equation and then see that what C 2 minimum is coming. So, I wait here for a minute and you can practice and uh, you can check that your result should be under root 2 D K 2 H 2. So, I am giving you directly the results, but I request all the participants that uh, if you substitute these values of Q 2, you get this C 2. This is at stage 2. Now, now coming to second level, we want to determine the value of Q 1 also. Now, Q 1 is n q 2, q 1 is n q 2 and for that purpose I write expression for c 1 also that is the total variable cost at uh, installation 1 d because that is the rate of consumption of your supply chain. So, d will remain as it is k 2 will be changed by k 1 and Q 2 will be changed by Q 1. So, this is the ordering cost or setup cost at installation 1. Now, comes the part of holding cost Q 2 by 2 H 2. Now, when you see you are procuring the inventory immediately you are left with Q 1 minus Q 2. In this case, we took uh, Q 1 equals to 3 Q 2. In this particular case, we have taken Q 1 equals to 3 Q 2. So, as soon as you procure the inventory, your 1 Q 2, you say if it is 
n q 2 if it is n q 2. So, out of n q 2 your 1 q 2 is gone to second stage. So, you are left with n q 2 minus q 2 you are left with at stage 1 you are left with n q 2 minus q 2 and then finally, you reaches to the 0 level. So, the average inventory is at stage 1 is n q 2 minus q 2 divided by 2 n q 2 minus q 2 divided by 2 that is the average inventory you have and that we will write here that is n q 2 minus q 2 n q 2 minus q 2 divided by 2 this is the average inventory we are going to have at stage 1 multiplied by the holding cost of stage 1 h 1 and again now you see the first expression is in q 1 the second step of this expression is in q 2. So, we can convert the whole expression in terms of q 2 only. So, I want to remove this q 1 from my expression. So, it can be written as d k 1 upon n q 2 plus n minus 1 q 2 by 2 h 1. So, this is the expression I have for the total variable cost at installation 1. Now, out of this uh, total variable cost q 2 I have already determined here q 2 I have already determined here. So, I need to determine I need to determine only unknown quantity. So, can you have a guess the only unknown quantity you can see in this expression is this n. So, I will differentiate this total variable cost at installation 1 with respect to n because I want to determine the value of n now and uh, this when I am putting the value of q 2 what I have received from here that I am going to put here. So, n will come if I calculate the n will come and uh, after rearranging my various mathematical terms n will come k 1 upon k 2 into h 2 upon h 1. So, this value of n will come and here though in this expression and in this model everywhere we have assumed we have assumed that the value of n will be an integer one the value of n will be an integer one. But here when I am doing this differentiation I am doing this calculation I am not taking that integer aspects into consideration here at this moment or I can write this n as n star. So, when I am writing this n star this n star is any kind of fractional value this can be any kind of fractional value and uh, there is a procedure we can follow since we have taken this assumption that n will be exactly integer. Now, when and why n should be in an integer that is a very obvious question and it must come to our mind that why we need to have n exactly an integer. The very reason for n to be an integer is that if n is an integer, so our procurement cycle at stage 1 can be matched with procurement cycle at stage 2. If n is not an integer what may happen that the procurement cycle at stage 1 will differ in its timing than the procurement cycle at stage 2. What may happen that either this right now you see this straight line is exactly matching with this straight line like this. So, you see as soon as 
you receive this stock here, you pass Q2 portion to stage 2 and this is happening only because n is an integer in this case, n is an integer in this case only because of that it is happening here. But if n is not integer, what will happen in that case? If n is not an integer, in that case this line will not match with this line. Either this line will be slightly ahead or it will be slightly backward. That is the problem with this. How, how that is going to be the problem? Because if n is not an integer, let us say it is 1.5 it is 1.5. So, you have 1.5 inventory which you are uh, ordering. If n is 1.5, so you will order q1 which is 1.5 times of q2 and for that reason, if this is how your q2 cycles are moving and then we have uh, this other pen to show our Q1 cycles. So, here Q1 is 1.5 times of Q2. So, you received Q1 and out of that a portion of Q2 is gone. So, you are left with Q1 minus Q2 which is equals to 0.5 Q2. So, you are left with only 0.5 q2 here, you are going here. Now, by the time you order next round of inventory, so you will go up to 2 q2 this level, then you will give one of that to the installation 2 and therefore, you will be either having more than required inventory at some time and sometime you will have less than required inventory. So, either you will fulfill the demand of this by just 0.5 q half the requirement of this second stage is being made by the available stock at installation 1 or if you are not willing to do that, then you will have excess inventories at your installation 1. So, because of these problems of mismatch of inventory management at 1 and 2, we always keep n as integer. n has to be integer. This sometime, this sometime we call as relaxation of original problem. In language of mathematics, we say that we have done the relaxation of the original problem. Original problem means by doing the differentiation, doing the maxima minima, n star can be any fractional value, any continuous value. But since we require only integer value, so we will see that how do we follow a process to convert these n stars into a uh, proper integer. So, now let us see that part where uh, we will convert n star into a proper integer so that this model can be properly used. Now, if the value of n star, if, if n star is less than 1, so your n is 1, but if n star more than 1, in case n star is more than 1, then how to select the values of how to round off? The meaning is how to round off the n, so that we can get the proper uh, scientific answer of doing the integer values. And for that purpose, we take this value, we consider this value which is the most possible, the nearest highest integer, nearest 
highest integer which is less than this which is less than this is the highest possible integer which is less than this. The meaning is that if the value of n star if the value of n star if uh, n star let us say is uh, 2.57 if n star is 2.57. So, in that case n star in this bracket becomes 2 and then we also have this type of relation. So, you conceive this type of relationship between these three values and with the help of comparison of these three values you decide whether we are going to have higher integer values or lower integer values. So, with this you will come to know we will do the comparison with the help of some numerical data in our next class and uh, with that we will come to know that uh, how this model can be used. Now, this is a case when we have done separate optimization. This is a case where we have done the separate optimization and in this separate optimization we have only considered one factor that q1 is dependent on calculation of q2 and then we determine the values of n and uh, by doing a proper procedure of rounding off which we will discuss we will have q1 equals to q and q2 and that is end of the separate optimization separate calculation of inventory values. But you will see we have not taken the benefits of supply chain environment in this particular case. We considered two entities separately and uh, for any reason there can be a relation of q1 equals to nq2 and uh, just by doing this mathematical jigglery we found out this particular process. Now, when I go for when I go for simultaneous optimization when I go for simultaneous optimization I will use the concept of this echelon stock I will use the concept of this echelon stock to determine whether I can use this supply chain environment for my inventory management or not. The point I am trying to say the total cost total cost total variable cost of inventory in case of this environment is C that is C 1 plus C 2 this is the total cost of supply chain in a separate optimization separate calculation of inventory values. Now, for simultaneous optimization I will take you to slightly different calculation which is uh, embedded in the concept of this echelon stocks. So, now we are going for that simultaneous calculation and in this simultaneous calculation you will see that we will define earlier the holding cost h was defined for the installations. Now, we will define the holding cost for the echelons. So, now the holding cost as we are moving in this supply chain from stage 1 to stage 2 we said the inventory holding cost h 1 and h 2. So, h 2 will be more than h 1 because you are doing some kind of value addition. Now, we are defining echelon holding cost which is represented by E. Now, when I am talking of h 2, 
So, I already had some value addition up to stage 1 and on that value addition up to stage 1, I have already paid a holding cost H1. So, it looks logical that I should pay at stage 2 the holding cost only for the amount of value addition which is being done from stage 1 to stage 2. So, this concept will help me in giving the concept of echelon holding cost and echelon holding cost E1 since this is the starting stage of my supply chain. So, E1 is equals to H1. The holding cost H1 is coming because of all the values which are added at stage 1. But the echelon holding cost at installation 2 E2 will be the result of difference of value you are adding from 2 to 1 and therefore, E2 will be H2 minus H1. So, this new cost E2 and E1 will help me in getting a more robust model where I will use supply chain environment for the inventory management. So, now when I have this concept of E1 and E2, I will like to rewrite the total cost of inventory in a single expression. I wrote cost of inventory, variable cost of inventory in two separate expressions C2 and C1 and then finally, I combined as C equals to C1 plus C2. Now, when I have defined these two things and I am doing the simultaneous calculation, simultaneous optimization, I will like to write total C in a single expression and uh, let us write that total C. When we write total C, so obviously, there will be two expressions for the holding cost and there will be two expressions for the ordering cost and let us see what happens and uh, how these types of results will emerge. Now, when we are doing that, you will see that we have total cost which is the result of whatever you are ordering at installation 2 D by Q2 and K2 plus D K1 upon N Q2. So, this relation will be for the ordering cost plus the holding cost. Holding cost now will not be paid for the installation rather we will have the holding cost given by the echelon holding concepts and for that purpose Q2 by 2 that is E2 plus Q1 by 2 E1. Now, Q1 by 2 can be replaced because it is N Q2. So, this can be written as N minus 1 by 2 Q1 E1. So, this is the or I can write in a slightly arranged manner that it becomes d by q2 from these two expressions k2 plus k1 by n plus from these two steps from these two steps you see you can take sorry this is q2 here this is q2 here this q2 by 2 you can take out and this remains E2 plus n minus 1 E1. So, this is the expression 
and when you see this expression you can you can very well understand you can very well understand that uh, this uh, holding cost right now uh, is uh, being written as uh, e2 and e1 and e1 here it is actually h2 and h1 and uh, it will be h2 h1 so it will like this and then you will have slightly rearrangement of this expression it will be q2 by 2 h2 plus n h1 minus h1 and this can be rewritten as q2 by 2 h2 minus h1 will account for e2 h2 minus h1 will account for e2 so these two expressions will give me my e2 and h1 is same as e1 h1 is same as e1 so this will become n e1 so my expression my expression if i simply summarize will be if I just for the sake of clarity remove these two lines. So, you can combine the expression like this it is d by q 2 k 2 plus k 1 by n plus q 2 by 2 e 2 plus n e 1. Now, if I see any of my total cost expressions if you see any of my total cost expressions and you see this expression. So, this d by q 2 is the number of orders I am placing in a year and this becomes cost of each order this expression within bracket k 2 plus k 1 by n this becomes the cost of placing an order. Similarly, q 2 by 2 is the average inventory level q 2 by 2 is the average inventory level and the expression within this bracket e 2 plus n e 1 this is actually the holding cost per unit which I am paying. So, now based on our knowledge of uh, EOQ models which we discussed now if I rearrange these terms to get the value of q 2. So, the final expression for my q 2 in case of simultaneous calculation will be you all can also practice with me you all can also write with me that q 2 will be now under root 2 d then here comes the cost of ordering that is k 2 plus k 1 by n divided by the holding cost that holding cost is this e 2 plus n e 1. So, this is the new economic order quantity at q 2 level and uh, this takes care because of the echelon concept this takes care of the supply chain environment. So, we will see the use of this formula with the help of a numerical data in our next class and I request you to please do the differentiation of this expression those who are interested in mathematics do the differentiation of this expression with respect to q 2 and try to get this formula try to get this formula of q 2. Though we have used our past knowledge of EOQ models to write this formula, but you can try a fresh so that you can get this formula. Thank you very much.